If we go back to 1994, most of us will remember only one thing, which is the actual act of voting. But it was the culmination of a very long process. When did you first realize, or, or who told you, that you were actually going to be the person in charge of all of that, of that process? I was on holiday on the south coast, and I had a phone call, and I spoke to the minister, uh, then Minister of Home Affairs, and I accepted the job subject to the Chief Justice saying OK. The job that I thought I was accepting was to to chair the electoral court. On the way to Cape Town the following week, I was told by somebody else who was going to the same meeting, in fact I was congratulated on being appointed to head the electoral commission. And I said, no, no, you've got it wrong. <laughs> I then realized that I'd, I'd agreed to it under a misapprehension. That's quite a, quite a moment in a way because it was the culmination of, of four years of negotiations. People, a lot of people were quite scared at the time. I mean, especially after Chris Harney and all of that. Did you ever sort of feel the weight of history on your shoulders? Yes. It, 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 at times it was frightening. But at the same time, uh, the, the alternative is just never a, a, a proposition. We just had to get on with it. The, the experts who we consulted and who we didn't consult but gave us gratuitous advice <laughs> told us that it couldn't be done. You couldn't mount an election like that within 18 months ideally two years, uh, and we had less than four months. So uh, part of the strength was that there wasn't time to hesitate, there wasn't time to argue, there wasn't time for petty differences. Uh, we were on the gallop and we just had to run. Did it help that, that everybody wanted this? I mean, no matter which side of the fence you were on, people almost wanted negotiations to be over, they wanted to get on with it? That's precisely it. It could never have worked if it were not for the political will on the part of the South African body politic as a whole. Under the leadership of inspired leaders who had seen that they could swim together or drown together, uh, but that had taken hold, there was a concerted determination. It was a rite of passage and uh, the political parties and electorate generally said uh, we're we're as my grandfather used to say if your foot is in the stirrup my boy you've got to ride <laughs> <laughs> we were there the night before so let's go to the 26th of, of april 1994 did you sleep that night a couple of nights we didn't sleep uh, uh, or if we did, no more than a, an hour or two. The election actually started on, on the 26th already. That was the special voting day uh, on which there were hordes of people who arrived at the polling stations who didn't qualify for special voting, but uh, how do you turn them away? So in, in fact, the tension started uh, two days before already. And the day of the elections, I mean, I think voting was spread over two days and then sort of almost went a bit further. But, but the vibe on the day, I think many of us will remember voting for the first time, the pictures of, of long queues, and those have become the image of that election. If you, if you go onto Google and you, you click image and you put South Africa 1994 election, you'll get particularly one picture. It's an aerial photograph of a queue. A, a glorious one, a it's, beautiful one, yes. of a peaceful crowd. And a, and a, a, a good-natured crowd. Mm. Uh, you know, there are all sorts of tales that are told of people apologizing to an aged O.C. for having to wait so long. And she says, I've waited for 30 years. <laughs> Another two hours is going to make no difference. That kind of thing. Mm. Uh, but uh, there was a general determination. This thing is going to work come hell or high water. And it did. Is there a particular image or a particular moment of that time that stands out for you? If for, if for most of us it's the, the act of voting I, or that particular picture, is there I one? Don't, I, I, I have no doubt. Uh, to me, the, the most memorable moment was when I walked into the Nazareth 
counting center where there was a mountain, literally a mountain, it must have been 20 meters high, of ballot boxes stacked on one another uh, on Saturday afternoon. The, days after the polling had closed, and not a single box had been opened. Uh, that I will remember uh, to the day I die. I, uh, I can see almost a bit of fear when you talk about oh it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, because we'd had to have an extra day of voting, the polling staff had been overextended. And by the time polling closed, those presiding officers who were amateurs, part-timers, recently appointed ease, uh, they brought the ballot boxes and they said, there you are, I've had enough. Mm. Uh, there was not going to be filling in of forms and all of the niceties. So the political party said, we can't start counting because we can't reconcile where's form X or Y mm. that you've got to fill in before you open the ballot box. Uh, there wasn't time for niceties. <laughs> Must oh, whoop, Del, let's go. <laughs> Judge, it sounds like you, you love elections and that you became addicted in 1994. Uh, I'm a fanatic. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot tell you the excitement of seeing little people in East Timor in, a, in their hundreds in order not to be intimidated by the Indonesian army to come and vote for their freedom. Wow, man, it grabs you. <laughs> to see the Afghans vote, to, notwithstanding bombs going off and uh, battles being fought, to be in, in, in Baghdad, uh, to be planning an election there. Uh, <laughs> South Sudan, uh, Kenya, uh, th th these are wonderful experiences to, to see the dignity of human beings being manifested, being recognized. Uh, it, it's a great experience. Yes, I am a fanatic. <laughs>